31, we're going to take a look at how to solve some logarithmic equations without using a calculator. Now, depending on the operating system you have on your TI-83 or 84, you may be able to do this exact expression, enter it exactly as is in your calculator. I'll tell you for my, my personal calculator, the one I have at home, I can't. Um, you see that this is a log base 121. I don't have that button on my calculator. Um, the closest I get is to this LOG button. And I'll talk about that um, closer to example four. I have an LOG button. That's a button without any base. And I'll, I'll tell you what that defaults to. And then I have an LN button. I'll also talk about what that represents. But I don't have a log base 121 button. I think the newer calculators will allow you to enter that in. And I will show you a little bit later on a workaround for how you can get this number on the TI-84, whether or not you have the new or old operating system. But I, I do want us to go through um, trying this problem out without using the calculator. All right, so let's take a look at this. We have log base 121 of 11 is equal to y. And I'm actually gonna write it in the other order log base 121 of 11 is equal to y. And this is because I, I think I am more comfortable working with the exponential equation of, of this, this equation given to me, or I should say the exponential form of this equation to me, rather than the, exp, or the logarithmic form it was given in. And, and just go with me for a bit. What I mean here is I see this logarithmic equation and I know I can convert it to an exponential equation. And I called that back in example one, the circle equation. I'm gonna start with 121. I know 121 raised to the y power is equal to 11. Okay, so I have that. And I'm more comfortable working with an exponential equation rather than a logarithmic equation. And, and actually, at this point in my career, I could do both of them, but I think most of us, when you're just learning logarithms, it's more comfortable going back to the exponential form. Well, let's see what we remember about 121. I hope it's ringing a bell that 121 is 11 squared. So I'm gonna rewrite 121 as 11 squared, and now I have a power raised to a power. I'm gonna multiply these exponents. So I will get 11 to the 2y, equaling 11 all by itself, but this is really 11 to the first power. And when you have two powers that are equal to each other and their bases are the same, then by default, their exponents have to be the same. So from here, I can simplify this to just say, well, 2y has to equal one or y has got to equal one half. So there I am solving for y, okay? And that's one way to do it, okay? I transferred this logarithmic equation over the equivalent exponential form, and I solved those exponential equations. And I got lucky, and, and I, I mean, this was intentional. The, the base of each of these powers had to be 11. They had to be the same number in order for this to work. If they weren't the same number, you would have to go to your calculator to solve it. All right, let me show you an, a different option. If I had y equaling log base 121, of 11, I would say, well, I do recognize that there's a relationship between 121 and 11. How could I rewrite 11 in terms of 121? Well, I could say this was log base 121 of the square root of 121, because the square root of 121 is 11. Well, I could say this was log base 121 of 121 to the 1 half, all right? And so keeping in mind that this y is an exponent, this is asking me, what exponent do I need on 121 to get it to be 121 to the 1 half? Well, I quite literally need 1 half, right? 121 to the 1 half is equal to 121 to the 1 half. So this is just 1 half. And this kind of brings up another property of logarithms. When the base of your logarithm is the same as the base of your power, the only thing that makes it out of there is the exponent. You can think of these as canceling out, and then the one half survives. 
So I, I show you this because we want to get more and more comfortable with properties of logarithms. So just to show you some of the special properties we've talked about between example one and example two, we talked in example one about how log base 12 of 12 was equal to one. When you have the same base for your logarithm as the base of the power, right? And this was 12 to the first power, you saw that basically the log and the exponent, excuse me, the log and the base cancel out and all you're left with is the exponent. We just saw that again with log of 121 of 121 to the 1 half, leaving us with 1 half. And the other special property that we saw in example one was we had log base six of one, and when you have one as your argument, your exponent is zero. So just keep in mind these three properties that are coming out of logarithms because we're gonna see them pop up again and again and again and the more familiar we are with them, the better off we'll be. All right, so with that, we're gonna try evaluating a couple more logarithms without using our calculators. All right, I'll see you in a bit, bye.